This episode contains sexually explicit and very sensual content that will tingle you to the core. Listener discretion is advised, especially if you're into discretion as much as we are. to the sultry sounds of the Sounds Like MLM But OK podcast, the only anti-MLM podcast just the way you like it. This is our After Dark special edition episode with us ladies only. In this episode, we're going to be talking about all those MLM products that are supposed to turn you on, but are just as disappointing as a mediocre Tinder date who doesn't pay for your Uber at the end of the night. Come hang out with us, ladies. Put the kids away. Put some Paw Patrol on Netflix for them. Get in the bathtub. I just promise you, you don't want to be listening to this in the commute home because you're just going to sploosh all over your seat. (laughs) And my name is Sasha. I will be your sexy tour guide through the horrible sex products MLM offer you. And here with me is the sexiest consumer advocate, Katie and Katie, how are you doing on this fine night? I'm doing great. What you drinking, Katie? You got anything special over there for our After Dark listeners who should also be drinking? <laughs> um, yeah, I started drinking a little bit early, so I was having some lemonade and Svedka blue raspberry. Nice. Lemonade and Svedka blue raspberry. It's a good combination. I, it sounds it sounds nice. It sounds very, very summery. It is. Yeah, it's very summery. I am drinking the infamous wine cube, which Katie knows about. I've talked about it. I've never actually be dr- I, I've never actually been drinking it with her while she's been around. But I went to Target, spent sixteen dollars. One box has uh four bottles of wine in it, and it is it's it's pretty decent. I can't complain. I got the cab. Super smooth. It's really the only boxed wine I recommend. So get to Target, ladies. And then listen to this episode. You got four bottles of wine. You can finish all four bottles by the end of this episode. But Well, don't do that. Please don't do that. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> let's just not. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. It's, it's a terrible idea. And if you are drinking during this episode, if you did listen to the intro and you're like, I would like to pour myself a glass of wine. Well, at the end of the episode or in the show notes, Katie and I will give our uh, Twitter handles out and all of our other ways of getting hold of us. Go ahead and contact us. What were you drinking during this episode? Thanks. Uh, Katie, is there anything about this episode that you think you're going to be really excited to discuss? I know you kind of know what it's about. Um, oh, gosh. I'm trying to think of what specifically I would be the most <laughs> excited to discuss. Um, I think the highlight is probably going to be Lucy Libido. Lucy Libido is the highlight. <laughs> And l- let's just tell you, coochie cream is par, par for the course. <laughs> I'm very excited to have, it's it's almost like Katie and I are having a bachelorette party together, even though we're not married. Or, I'm sorry, even though we are married, we're not married to each other. But it's like <laughs> having a bachelorette party, and we've already been married it's for fun. several years. We're so just having a, let's, uh, you know, a drink together yeah, night. And, and break out those those penis straws and 
play the like pin the erection on the man <laughs> game that they have. I, I don't remember what happened at bachelorette parties, but there was a lot of it, it, it was very, very phallic, very phallic. Not yeah. in my good Christian suburbs. I, no. I didn't have a bachelorette party, but I never really understood why why people make everything penis themed. I mean, it just seems, I don't know. Maybe it's just me because I don't think that they're all that great, but I don't know. Well, because it's men marketing the products. That's true. Yeah, I guess that's true. That, I mean, not to get too uh, too into my rad femme agenda, but yeah, men are marketing the products, so of course they're going to want you to see dick even on a hen night or a bachelorette night. So, Katie, are you ready to talk about some pure romance? I am. I'm so ready. All right, well, hold on to your panties. Make sure they stay nice and dry because we're going to slide on into this pure romance segment. Well, hello, dear listeners, and welcome back after that little musical interlude. We are going to discuss pure romance, and their tagline is empower, educate, entertain. Does that sound familiar, Katie? Yeah, I mean... (laughs) Yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, a good portion of MLM's tagline is empower. They all think that they're empowering women, and it's just <sighs> gross. <laughs> but this seems so unique, specific. I mean, I guess Lularoe has the same says a lot of the same things, and almost all of them talk about empowering women, but a good portion of them have part of their tagline or whatever is empowering women. You know, a raunchy thought popped into my head, and I'm sorry, but I wonder how many women whose husbands have come home and been like, wow, you look you look really good in those hamburger leggings for some reason. <laughs> and they start to just like make out on the couch and get a little hot and heavy, how soon before they're actually undressing does that wet tissue paper just kind of disintegrate? (laughs) And then does the man get turned on by it? (laughs) There's there's so many aspects to what you just said. Honestly, the first thing that caught my attention was wearing food themed items to get a man's attention. (laughs) Well, it, it can work. It can work. And there's rule, uh, what is it? Rule 43 on the internet? Rule 34? I always get the number switched. But if uh, it's on the internet, someone has definitely had a little solo day to it. (laughs) Solo sesh. I don't know. Maybe there, maybe there is a market out there for torn Lularoe leggings. So, ladies, if you want to make some extra money, look into that. Be be a real entrepreneur and start that. (laughs) So... This segment isn't going to be about really the ins and outs of pure romance. We don't we didn't consult anyone from pure romance on this. This is just some weird stuff that we found and we just thought it would be fun to drink after dark and talk about these crazy products or crazy ideas or crazy advertising macros that they put on their their Facebooks. So the first one that I have listed here, a rep eating lube to curb sugar cravings. Uh, It's hard to think of the words. I just... (laughs) Why? Why? I have all the things that you could try. Eating lube just seems like the last viable option. Get a stick of gum or just start smoking. (laughs) Right. Like... Lube is not food. Don't just eat it. Well, and and in some lubes, I get... Well, here's the problem with eating lube, is if anyone has ever had flavored lube, it tastes like a rancid Jolly Rancher. It's terrible. Secondly, if you don't pick the right lube, it's got benzocaine in it. And benzocaine's a cousin of lidocaine and novocaine. It's, it's a numbing agent. So I don't know if any of you in your heyday went and tried to put a condom on with your mouth and then your 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 mouth and your tongue and your lips were numb for an hour and a half. That's because of benzocaine. So maybe that's the key to her sugar cravings. Maybe. 
she just numbs her taste buds. And another weird thing that we, we've seen the notice, we first noticed it on May 4th. But now I think with the solo, oh my gosh, they have not made any advertisements with the word solo or using a solo campaign in it, Katie. <laughs> I'm surprised, but I'm not at the same time. <laughs> Like, that would be hilarious. Oh, I bet we'll see it. Get, give it give it like four days after this episode comes out, especially where it is either alien or droid sex or both. If there's droid sex, I could definitely see that as a way for pure romance consultants to sell their wares. But, of course, we're talking about Star Wars. And for May the 4th be with you, they were the queen of those dank memes that day. They were all... <laughs> over and the one i i remember i can't remember any specifically from the pure romance may the 4th but we still see them pop up occasionally it has that picture of it's an off take with carrie fisher standing next to chewbacca chewbacca is grabbing her breasts the font over the image says don't be a wookie shave your cookie Okay, I did not, I guess I never really looked at that one. I just read what it, I didn't look at the picture. I just read what it said because I didn't even realize that Carrie Fisher was on it. I only remember seeing Chewbacca. I mean, what would Carrie Fisher say? Oh, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. But, you know, if you want to compare my vagina to a Wookiee, that's totally fine. Like, Wookiees are, uh, they're very loyal. (laughs) <laughs> they uh they celebrate if any of you've seen the uh star wars holiday special like haul out to you for watching that full hour and a half because <laughs> it's not even good bad it's bad bad if you want to go on youtube and look at it for yourself it's fine so i could also name my vagina after several of the wookie characters who are in chewbacca's family in this uh star wars holiday special from 1978 I believe his wife's name is Mala, or I could I could name my vagina after Chewbacca's son, Lumpy, <laughs> especially if it's a small one. That's just, why would you name your kid that? That's terrible. Even Chewbacca makes more sense to me than Lumpy. I know. It's like they wanted to name him a an exotic name. So, well, well, let's let's name Lumpy something in the English language. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe this will give him a head start in life when he wants to go middle management. And they just they just failed. They did not understand the 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 connotations and nuances, <laughs> those subtle nuances of naming your child Lumpy. <laughs> Terrible. Another weird pure romance ad that I've seen that this one got a huge laugh from my husband, Greg. Uh, this was also for a lubricant. Maybe it's the same lubricant that our rep was noshing on earlier. Maybe. I like the taste of penis. Said no woman ever. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's yeah. just not a claim that you can make unless you've literally spoken to every woman other, ever. I'm just saying. Well, I picture it in the a SpongeBob meme where it's in sticky caps. <laughs> <laughs> like, sad, no woman ever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty... <sighs> silly. It's just silly. They're all so very interestingly creative and it's like i don't know what your man's penis tastes like (laughs) but they they generally have a um it tastes like skin tastes like skin yeah and the next bit of business i'd like to get into about these pure romance consultants is how they call themselves sexual health educators now i don't think anybody hardly knows that yes i was a sexual health educator my uh, real briefly, my story begins. I went to uh, mortuary school. I'm a licensed funeral director in mortuary school. We had a really weird and long unit on STDs and UTIs and all that. No idea why. And then you've heard me mention several times before that I am a licensed yoga teacher. I did that so I could teach grief yoga at a funeral home. But then nobody wanted me because I guess that's not how they saw their business model going 
<laughs> and then so uh, I was ready to leave the funeral industry. I'd been volunteering at this woman's clinic for a while. And they said, hey, you've got a pathology background and you, you're really dedicated to the cause. Why don't you come work as a sexual health educator? And I said, I'm on. So when they call themselves sexual health educators, it's a little uh, a little insulting. And I know that we have a couple couple people in the group who are a little insulted by the title of women or excuse me of sexual health educators i decided to take a gander i'm on the pure romance site already looking up stuff for this episode <laughs> i uh browse on over to the tab that says uh sexual health click on it first thing i see is a toy cleaner called come clean but they decide to spell come the wholesome family way c-o-m-e when they could have gotten really nasty and raunchy with their audience and done c-u-m i mean it's really a missed opportunity really is. oh it was it was like I, I i guess i guess they're trying to sell to to mommies who may have never set foot in a sex store before but these mommies are millennials now it's almost a rite of passage to go into a sex store on your 18th birthday so yeah just just call it c-u-m clean i mean and like the internet is a thing the you internet can, is a thing you can buy yes. sex toys and anything you ever wanted on the internet without having to go to one of their parties and you can do it privately you don't have to be in a room with a bunch of people you don't know very well you don't have to be testing out lubes on your forearm. In you don't have to be in the embarrassing situation of being put into some kind of like weird sex sling <laughs> where it's velcroed around your ankles and you look like you're in a boat pose and yoga. It's, 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 they are very, very strange parties. And the one I went to it was a passion party, but I was not drunk enough to be there. It was terrible. And it was cringe inducing. <laughs> Maybe that's part. I guess the parties are part of their sex education. This is how, how they're helping marriages stay well, alive. That's how they call. That's how they can call, call themselves sex, sex. Oh my gosh, sex educators because they get people to demonstrate toys and stuff at their parties. So they're educating them about the appliances. You know, it's, it's not like loophole. my husband hasn't <laughs> run out with me with our entire life savings. You know, he took everything out of the kids' college funds, left in the middle of the night, and I'm just going to go to a pure romance party, buy a dildo with a rabbit head on it, and be like, hey, baby, <laughs> I know you've done wrong. I know we can make this right. What do you say? <laughs> and then you offer it to him, like, like this weird this weird erotic olive branch <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh they also have under the sexual health section they've got vaginal exercisers and dilators okay yes these are very useful for sexual health get them cheaper elsewhere we don't make any money by telling you where you could get them katie and i have some ideas but <laughs> don't get them there <laughs> There's so many other places, you guys, so many. And my favorite, my favorite is a six pack of pure romance branded co condoms for $9. Do they have gold flakes on them? That's the only hey, if reason. You want it to, <laughs> if you want it to rain gold out of my pussy and out of my ass, well then, yeah, maybe. <laughs> honestly it, it, uh, honestly yes they could because oh uh, what is that gold vodka you can get oh yeah bottom shelf can't well, think of the name uh, right now but you it's, guys it's not like gold schlager or something like that it's something like know. that yeah 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 so you can get that bottom shelf so if you can get that bottom shelf then why can't these pure romance condoms be made of like wish quality and still have gold flakes in them? <laughs> yeah, just because a product has gold in it doesn't make it good. And just because it's expensive doesn't make it good. No, no. And that's true for all MLMs. So what I also have written down here is that they love to push coochie cream on the elderly. 
<laughs> whether it's creating care packs for nursery homes, uh, assisted living, or it's just some general advice that someone gives to you to give to Mima for Grandmother's Day. <laughs> You know, I'll tell you what my grandma doesn't want for Mother's Day, and that is shaving cream of any kind. I can say with some confidence that I don't think most people's grandmas would know what coochie cream means. My grandma definitely doesn't know what coochie cream means, like what coochie is. She'd have to ask me when I was watching uh, on a sick day when I was a kid, she had rented Death to Smoochie for me. <laughs> uh, I, I think she just thought it was a wholesome kids show and she got a whole like wonder shows and experience out of it in the end. <laughs> she asked me, baby, what's a dildo? <laughs> yeah, so I'm sorry, grandma. I'm really sorry. I'm and sorry don't that we grandma had to have this conversation. Oh, uh, and and don't 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 get d don't get the the elder women in your life coochie cream. They're probably fed up with fucking shaving anyway. Just let them do what they want to do. Right. By the time I'm like 80, which you know, obviously, I know that grandmas aren't just all 80 years old. I know this. But I feel like by the time I'm 80, I am not going to have any interest in shaving or really care about body hair very much. Uh, definitely not as much as I care about it now. There's so much other more important things to be concerned about. I mean, let's just call me Chewbacca. Like, I'm at 30 <laughs> and sometimes I'm just like, what? am I showing off my legs today? Am I doing anything? No, I am Chewbacca. <laughs> you know what, though? I And I'm 25, and I very regularly just happen to look at my legs and go, oh, shit, my, I don't think I've shaved in like a month. My legs are really hairy. I should probably shave. <laughs> but then it always feels so much better afterwards because then, I don't know, something about it when you have pants on, it just feels... When you shave your legs, it just feels so much better. But I do yeah, well, regularly miss shaving for long periods of time because I just don't care. You know, I just don't care anymore. I'm in that boat. I expect my husband any day now to say, laugh it up, fuzzball. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like, who? Then, then we're going to ride are, away on who, the Millennium <laughs> Falcon together. Who are we trying to impress? Our husbands? Certainly not. They've already been impressed. We already did that. We're done with it now. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happens right after you get married. That, that's why the two <laughs> romance consultants have to come in so that I can come home with a, a $120 rabbit vibrator. Babe, have you ever seen anything like this? And his face gets red and, and, and he looks at me and says, uh, maybe. <laughs> 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 really, honey? Oh, gosh. Um, and so the other thing that I know Katie and I have both seen are reps buying little onesies, you know, with the snaps for their newborn babies that Ugh. say pure romance happened. It's just the worst. I mean, honestly, if there is a baby, there's a really good chance that somebody had sex to have that baby. You know, I just don't think that it's important to make a point of that. I don't need to know that much about your child or you. I really don't. And I just don't. It, again, we're going back to what I know about Solo, which I haven't seen yet. And I believe either Lando or Han ha uh, gets down with a droid. Are we implying that there are mechanic sperm that can make my baby into a Terminator? <laughs> Oh, man, that is that is a brand new idea right there. Hmm. It'd be like the movie Boss Baby with uh, with Alec Baldwin, yeah. except we would, you know, because they're rebooting movies all the time. Everything is a reboot. So let's just have a prequel Terminator and we get um, my former governor of California to come on <laughs> and reprises role uh, voice acting for Terminator Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, I don't know, depending on which direction you're wanting to go with this, this may just be a straight up porn. Everything can be a straight up porn. 
but <laughs> I, I forget what actually happens at the beginning of Terminator 1 because I don't know how many people have actually seen Terminator 1. Terminator 2 seems to be the uh, the, the, the standby. You know, you got the guy who played Agent Doggett in uh, X-Files and they're all running around and you got your Sarah Connor, blah, 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 blah. What happens in Terminator 1? Maybe that explains his origins i don't know but if there was a terminator baby cgi movie to come out under dreamworks well shit i might have to say sign me up i <laughs> asked to watch the emoji movie for my 30th birthday i am not above it <laughs> i am not above lowbrow entertainment i think a lot of people don't want to admit that but most people are not above lowbrow entertainment well, I'm definitely above Emoji Movie, but I had seen Food Fight. Food Fight. The classic Food Fight. <laughs> seven or eight times at that point. So I said, I, I, is Emoji Movie the new Food Fight? Let's see. And it wasn't, but it was still <laughs> bad and not good bad. Moving on. Uh. Oh, here's, here's a cool product. The Basic Instinct Pheromone Spray. Oh. So what this spray is, you're supposed to spray it on you. Apparently, it's got pheromones in it that are going to attract men on you like maggots on a dead raccoon in the middle of the road. That's, what? that's, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> They're just, <laughs> just going to come flocking to you. It's like the it's like the opposite of those axe those awful axe commercials. Do you remember those? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. I definitely do. Yeah. But those when, the when I see sp pheromone spray, I think of uh, Feel Away, which is a plug-in. It's it's like a Glade plug-in for your cats. Apparently, has like cat pheromones or some shit in the air. They, they get really calm. Okay, so I'm gonna have all these guys on me like cats, and cats have spiky penises. <laughs> hard pass really really hard pass then the second thing i think about is just the fact that it's called basic instinct which makes me think of the michael douglas and sharon St oh. <laughs> <laughs> i can't even do it um it's called basic instinct which just reminds me of the michael douglas and sharon stone film that was from 1992, where he is the sexy detective coming to investigate her husband's murder and he ends up seducing her. And it has really decent ratings on uh, IMDb and Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes. Oh yeah, rub those Rotten Tomatoes all over me. So basic instinct pheromone spray when you want Michael Douglas and a bunch of horny cats to come after you. <laughs> and maggots. You got to be dead in the middle of the road and you have to be some kind of rodent creature like a like a like an opossum or a I know they're marsupials, but like an opossum or a raccoon. And then Gross. all the men will be all over you. Gross. No, thanks. OK, so here I have a video clip I'd like to play for you from a local news story from Augustus. This gentleman, Larry, apparently called in local news after a pure romance rep rolled into town and desecrated his neighborhood. And to paint the scene, picture, close your eyes. <laughs> this is a uh, middle class, southern living kind of place. All retired folk in this neighborhood. Larry, our protagonist, he's wearing a red baseball cap and a plaid shirt. He looks to be like he's a late baby boomer with gray hair. He's not happy about these pure romance reps rolling on in. So, Larry, why don't you neighborhood? Why don't you tell us what's up, Larry? Not something you'd expect to see hanging on your mailbox. Well, there's uh, people advertising for a sex party on my mailbox. Um, and all my neighbors' mailboxes. Goodie bags with a peppermint, lollipop, a sticker, and a business card for a pure romance party. Well, why do I want that at my front door? You know, why do I want you advertising a sex party at my front door? Why would I want you advertising at my front door? That's a good question, Larry. Yeah, Larry, you tell it <laughs> like it is. So, Larry is very, very distressed. 
that these little pure romance packages have shown up on his mailbox. They're pink little mesh bags that are filled with the goodies and the business card of the rep. The uh, local TV news crew goes a step further and decides to show him what this this certain rep who we're not going to name is selling. The included business card directs people to the Pure Romance website. There you can find dozens of adult products. What's that? Oh, well, I'm not even going to say that on camera. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to say that on camera. Poor Larry. Oh, man. Poor innocent Larry. <laughs> well, I wonder what Larry was looking at. I know. Who hurt you, Larry? Well, maybe he didn't have to be hurt. Maybe he just didn't want a vibrator with a rabbit that's going to electrocute him. <laughs> I don't know if Pure Romance products have ever electrocuted anyone. Just making a funny, making a funny, but probably not a good product. So yeah, he should be should be very afraid. So the, the new segment goes on. The local TV news reporters call the rep and say, hey, you know, you advertised in this retirement community. They're a little offended. What are your thoughts on that? She says, well, pure romance is not just for sex parties, like they say. It's for couples, too. And we sell things like lubricants and shaving cream and lotions. And if they don't want me to advertise in their neighborhood again, well, Gosh darn it, I guess I won't. And it's like, yeah, they don't want you ad advertise in the neighborhood again. Like, mission accomplished. Right. Hashtag girl bye. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, thanks. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> bye, Felicia. Get a tent. <laughs> oh, man. What is what does Larry think about all this? Would uh, uh, is is this is this really truly offensive to Larry? What do we think? It's hilarious to me. It's so stupid. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a total classic. It's a classic gym that's just so mad about something that they don't even know what to say. It's so stupid. It's funny. Like, you're such you're such an idiot. I find it hilarious. Honestly, it's one of the first times I've been able to relate to a baby boomer. <laughs> Larry, Larry in the in 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 uh, South South Unit, the Southern United States. He speaks for us all. That's exactly so what I was going to say. <laughs> funny. Larry, would you ever do anything like this? I would never do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> so good to know, Larry. So on our, our last piece of this pure romance kind of cliff notes that we're doing, it seems like every MLM that we know about, it works. Obviously, the oily ones. I think pretty much everybody's coming out with some kind of essential oils in MLMs now. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it in Mary Kay next to help you get some beauty sleep or some bullshit like that. Yeah, yes. it's pretty much hit all yes. the like health and wellness ones. So I would say the makeup ones are probably next. The makeup ones are next. Well, Unique has that rose water. That's kind of borderlining. I guess. <laughs> close. It's close. Sort of. Sort of. So Pure Romance has rolled out a line of four essential oils. I don't know what's in them. There's just the four with cutesy names and what you're supposed to use them for. Number one, time to go flow. Keep your cool during your monthly cycle. What I want during my <laughs> monthly cycle is hit the road, Jack. You're not touching me. No, yeah. really. Hit the road and go jack off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what you're going to do this week. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Secondly, rise and grind. Kickstart feelings of energy and confidence, which just me thinks, uh, makes me think of the R. Kelly song, Bump and Grind. <laughs> I don't see nothing wrong. With a little bump and grind. <laughs> and then I think you said it reminded you of instant coffee. I feel like that's what most people would think. Rise and grind. Get up and go. Like boss babe hustle. Get it girl. Like a boss. Boss lady. Hashtag. All of that. Or hashtag Morningwood. 
because I'm going to run. <laughs> my man will rise. I'll be, you know, and then he'll come like and be like, oh, baby, I want a spoon. And I feel that knock at the back door. And <laughs> <laughs> there's some gyrating oh this is the rise and grind your romance essential oils were trying to sell to me probably thank you probably thank you for that knock on the back door thank you for the morning wood at 3 30 in the morning when i need it the most <laughs> the third one is bang bang ignite <laughs> feelings of passion yeah, that one's pretty self-explanatory. It's very aptly named. It, it just <laughs> makes me think of William Hung. She bang, she bang. <laughs> Which is Ricky Martin. I, I know Ricky Martin was the one who popularized the song, but I think William Hung actually brought it to a more mainstream audience. And it's just so I'm going to call that oily hung, oily hung to ignite the feelings of passion. Finally, our last one is open sesame. Support feelings of easy breathing with this clarity blend. So it's going to help you in an asthma attack. <laughs> Open sesame. Because it is the magical phrase in Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. So I'm picturing my partner's dick that I'm going to call <laughs> Alibaba. And he's, he's trying to get into my cave, which only magically opens when he says Open sesame. Alibaba has to hear all 40 thieves say open sesame. So does this mean that my partner has been watching my Tinder history and is like, oh, there seems to be some kind of code here. Open and a grain, open and a grain. What, what could that be? Open and a grain. But he wants to get in there because it's full of magic treasure. And what is that magic treasure inside of my, uh, Inside my vaginal canal? I don't know. Is it the <laughs> cervix? What does somebody want up there? I mean, I think you know. Well, I think they, they, they want to get off, but I don't know if that's the magic treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, that about wraps it up for this uh, very, very pure. It was so pure. It was as pure as it could be. 7.0 pH. Put that in your water filter. The purest of all waters. Uh, <laughs> pure romance segment. We just talked some bullshit about it. Katie, is there anything you want to add about uh, pure romance that we maybe didn't get to? I don't think so. I think we pretty much covered everything important. Yeah, the important stuff like condoms <laughs> being a six pack for for nine dollars, <laughs> well over a dollar a condom. Yeah, like no, go to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Those are fine, and they've actually been tested to ensure that they're safe. Yeah, I wouldn't trust pure romance condoms. Of of all of the products that you could buy from an MLM to put your trust in, I think pure romance condoms is like the last one on my list. And you know what's sad is that some women have them in their bedroom drawer. Some guys have them in their wallet. Don't keep your condom in your wallet. But some guys have them in their wallet because their ex-girlfriend sold pure romance and now, you know, just just kind of that's what happened when they split up and stuff got split up. You got the there, shitty there end of people, the deal getting that pure romance condom. They're among us. Be <laughs> careful. <laughs> Have backup. <laughs> so, ladies, continue soaking in that tub, and we will be right back after this musical interlude and talk about Lucy Libido, the young, living, oily Dr. Ruth. She's going to solve all your sex problems, and she's going to save your marriage, and all it takes is a little bit of oil between the sheets. Hopefully, they're not your good sheets. I would never do something like that. And welcome to our next segment that's called I Love Lucy Libido. Lucy, I'm home. And this is about who I like to call the oily Dr. Ruth. The first segment on my um, outline here just says, who the fuck is Lucy Libido? <laughs> A good question. Well, who, who is who is Lucy Libido? Well, let me tell you about Lucy Libido. She's a, a millennial who is basically a rockabilly, young living, shilling Dr. Ruth wannabe. She has a website that's lucylibido.com, and she wrote a book called The Girlfriend's Guide 
for using essential oil between the sheets. My sheets are too expensive for <laughs> essential oils. It's one thing to have to get other things out of the sheets. You put them in OxyClean. I don't know if OxyClean can touch Young Living. Yeah, I, there's just so many reasons why using essential oils for sexy times is a bad idea. And we're going to get to those reasons because everything Lucy Libido says is wrong. Too bad this isn't a drink. I mean, we're both drinking, but too bad we're not making it into a drinking game. Like every time you shouldn't do what Lucy Libido says, you take a drink. So at we, the end of the night, you'll be too drunk to fuck. <laughs> yeah, we just we wouldn't we'd be constantly drinking. It, it, yeah, we, we would be uh, we would be white girl wasted. So her <laughs> book was the number one selling book, quote, in her category Whatever that means. I don't, I, I, I mean, there is a category for everything when you self publish. So is this the essential oils category? It's definitely not the sexual health category. Or is it specifically some kind of young living category within Amazon? Because there are a lot of young living books out there. Yeah. Ah, you know what, Katie? Hey, mm. hey, Katie. Yeah. We are the number one anti-MLM podcast out there. <laughs> Did you know that? The number one in our it's, category. It's it's easy to do when you're the only one competing. Yeah, I know, right? Like, like just wait. I think you and I are technically considered influencers now. <laughs> and if we're influencers, that may mean that we will get wristbands to Fire Festival 2019. <laughs> so <laughs> she also hosts a sex young living class called There's an Oil for That, just like that old trope from 10 years ago. There's an app for that. Real original humor, guys. Really appreciate it. There's an oil for that. And she vaingloriously boasts about the size of her classes in this podcast episode that we got all the clips from. I've said enough about Lucy Levito. Let's let Lucy speak for herself. My name is Lucy Levito, and I'm actually many different women. So I started a class a couple of years ago, and it was for Valentine's Day. I wanted to teach a class on how to use oils in the bedroom to spark up your Valentine's day. And so I tried to go out and get some information on that to research that. And everywhere I, I looked, there was no information. It was not in any guide, any book, any reference guide. And I was like, well, shoot, how am I going to teach this class without any information? And so I realized, hmm, I'm going to have to find it out myself. We're going to have to do some experiments. So this is what I did. Sounds kind of dangerous, actually. I like that last little... <laughs> sounds kind of dangerous, actually. Well, that's because it I, is. I added that in. Yes, I kept that in because you know what? It is dangerous. <laughs> like, we don't know what, what, what Lucy, Lucy Libido hasn't said in the interview what she's planning to do with these, uh, with these oils. Is she going to diffuse them? Is she going to use them internally? Is she going to use them to um, light the burner on her gas stove? I don't even know. But I, I found it very, yes. So I kept that in. Thank you, dear interviewer. It is very <laughs> dangerous. She gets her experimentation group, which I love this because it sounds like a college sorority of girls who are like, I've always wanted to be with a girl. It's actually a focus group. And every night they're assigned some kind of different combination of oils to use with their partners. They end up reconnecting in the morning over the phone. And after she collects all this research, she decides to teach a class. Again, at 6.48 the episode, she drives the point home that Lucy is everyone. Okay, cool. Lucy is everybody. Lucy is within all of us. Lucy is Jesus. <laughs> I got it. We are all Lucy. We are all one. We are all Lucy. I, I, am, I am pantheistic for Lucy. So she ends up starting this class. She says, I have in my notes, that from all different backgrounds, everyone from all different backgrounds is Lucy. Again, at the 750 mark, she has to mention that Lucy is a combination of every woman. What? 
uh, it's like, could you, could you, could you not have any kind of niche branding? You're just going to be like, oh yeah, this is, <laughs> this is just for everybody. <laughs> like every, uh, wh- whatever. She's, she's probably making a lot more money than I am. She claims that people were so thankful for having Lucy save their marriages. Lots of, um, ML, oh, excuse me, MLM oil praising in the podcast episode, which wasn't just limited to Young Living, but because this MLM oily mess is a sisterhood. And she says her class is an extension of the values Young Living praises with community and sisterhood, which she gets to share with her close knit group of women who then get to take it out to the people that they love the most. And basically the world is just a happier place because of Lucy libido being this YL disciple. Well, all hail Lucy libido, all hail Lucy libido. So she took her new fan base and opened up a Facebook event for Valentine's day class. She was so surprised (laughs) at how many people were RSVPing. So she starts the class and then she complains something about like about the mindset of some of the people in the class weren't there for the right reasons. And I don't know what that means. Like, were were they like like furries coming in looking for war porn? (laughs) Or like, yeah, what <laughs> What were they there like, looking for and what should they have been looking for? <laughs> they were looking for for she said oils. They're like, is this a cooking class? Is this how I can uh, how I can relate to my husband better if we learn how to cook with uh, more olive oil in our Italian uh, recipes <laughs> that we got off of uh, food dot com? Uh <laughs> Will my husband love me if I use more olive oil? He might. (laughs) You know? So then a year later, people were apparently, according to her, pissed that they didn't get into the first class last year. Like, she's the most sought-after class to get into. Like, she's some kind of high-ranking TED Talk. I don't know. Like, it was a (laughs) secret club. So she developed... Team Lucy to help her moderate the class. And this is this is where I start to say, hmm, hmm, I don't know. I want to see the receipts on that. <laughs> the class had 10,000 people. Where would that even be held? Because you look at college campuses, even your large college campuses don't have lecture halls for 10,000 people. Well, did she say it was a physical class or it was going to be held like on Facebook Live? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was held on Facebook Live, but then why would she need Team Lucy there? I still very much doubt that there were 10,000 people. That That's a lot of people. She said, quote, they literally waited a year for the help. She said, quote, People were telling, I'm sorry, she said that people were telling her that she was, quote, saving our marriage. And she says, this is my calling. At the end of the class, people were absolutely begging for her to write a book so they could share this joy with the girlfriends. Because that's what I think when I find something that really gets me going. I'm like, (laughs) hey, girl, you know, you should... Here, read all about how torn LuLaRoe leggings are the new aphrodisiac for men. They just want to see those torn hamburgers all over your ass. (laughs) I just, I mean, uh, I understand for some people having a really, really active sex life could improve their marriage or, you know, make them feel better about their marriage or closer to their spouse, you know, whatever. But I have a really hard time believing that using these special essential oil blends has improved their sex life and their marriage in a way that literally any other lubricant couldn't do. Well, and then, you know, you look at my household with uh, my husband Greg and our two cats. Let's just say I uh, innocently diffuse some uh, peppermint 
or something, then our cats are dead. Yeah, that really that really got my husband in the mood. I killed our cats. <laughs> our cats are dead. Oh, oh, goodness. Goodness that was, gracious. That took a really morbid turn. Well, you know, that's what happens when you used to be a is kind of director. morbid if you're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, how does she suggest that we, and I think that she's talking to women specifically, how should we be using these essential oils to, you know, get the good times going? My favorites are um, cypress and ylang ylang. Um, I also really like clary sage. Cypress um, works by increasing blood flow. So I think any adult listening knows that blood flow is kind of a big, important part of va va boom. So when you apply cypress to your inner thighs, it increases blood flow, which makes things so much more exciting. And you can also use ylang ylang or joy, and that um, helps to lower frigidity, and it helps to encourage feelings of love and romance. And then clary sage helps with dryness. And so combining those three are a pretty exciting way to um, make some volcanoes erupt. Lovely. Getting juicy. Getting juicy. Getting juicy. I love it. (laughs) So... Yeah, that's that's what you want to do. Um, it sounds pretty generalized, but do you, do you want to know what what your man needs? What what would you use on your husband? What does my man need? What does your man need? Here we go. I always tell people the very first thing you need to get for him is Idaho Blue Spruce. Idaho Blue Spruce is a good one. It's a good one for firmness, for longevity, for stamina. It is a fun one. And I'll tell you that there were no men in our research group that did not appreciate a little a little Mr. Massage with some Idaho Blue Spruce to warm things up. Everyone likes that. So it's a great way to get things started. But where? what are you supposed to do with the oil uh, is the question. She kind of answers that in in this next clip about where you apply the oils and how um, how it's supposed to work for you. I'm honestly because, scared to find out <laughs> because you know Lucy Lucy Libido was birthed when she was birthed. She came out with a uh, with her umbilical cord and a PhD in hand, or excuse me, an MD. She she's a real real smart cookie. Uh, we give very very specific directions that you should always be diluting anything you ever use on your forearm first to make sure, especially if it's an oil you've never used before, you always want to dilute on your arm. And then we always recommend you can put on your inner thighs. I have a whole chapter on recipes for inner thigh blends and you place it on your inner thigh from about your mid thigh all the way up to the panty line. And you can do that for men and for women. And you can also do it below your navel. Then we have some recipes that are mild enough that for the woman you can use even on her love button and for the man on the, on his shaft. We're very specific. We refer to the man and his soldier as standing at attention and how to help that soldier stand at attention. And we always always say to apply oils at the shaft of the soldier, but never in his eyes because oils never go in your eyes, whether it is two eyes or a one-eyed snake. Here's my issue. Uh is (laughs) is <laughs> that's always a good start to a sentence they like to call themselves sexual health educators and i feel like most people that are involved in pure romance kind of pride themselves on how comfortable they are with talking about sex and you know things that most people aren't really comfortable talking about that most people are pretty private about and I mean, if you're going to use, why only use partial correct terms like shaft and then turn around and call the whole package a soldier? Like, why give it goofy names? Just use the correct terms. Giving it silly names and cutesy names just, I mean, personally, I can't take people like that seriously. I just can't. Well, I, I think I'm going to change my Twitter handle to love button 69 <laughs> Please don't. Because <Like. laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part. When she said love button, I was like, what? Is she saying labia? <laughs> no, love button. 
So, yeah, it, it, that's what really bothers me, too, this whole lack of medical terminology. And we're supposed to take her seriously as a sexpert, but she can't w- say this word clitoris or penis. When you look back at it and you watch old episodes of Sex in the City, it's like, shit, even Carrie Bradshaw demonstrated a better understanding of the nomenclature of pathology. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Katie Bradshaw would whip out those words. Just talk like an adult and use, you know... I, technically, medical terminology. Especially if you have the word libido in your uh, last name and your pseudonym. I'm right. expecting a little bit of, uh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody who's comfortable with using actual words and not silly, cutesy names. Love button. Ugh, that one grosses me out so much. <laughs> I didn't take clips of what areas should one avoid, but I um, I just took some quick notes on it. She talks a lot about the difference between hot oils and cold oils. So you never want to use hot oils undiluted on sensitive mem- membranes, which she doesn't specify. But, you know, hey, maybe you can figure it out. And those hot oils would be thieves, peppermint, and lemongrass. She also suggests, here you go, Katie, I got something for you that you're going to like, using coconut oil as Mm. a carrier oil to keep the lady bits healthy, which is something I never heard of before, to prevent yeast infections. Why do people think that coconut oil is okay to just bathe in? Just, just, Just slather your body in it, put it up inside you just just get it everywhere drink it eat it just become coconut oil man when you say become coconut oil like i don't know it just sounded really really deep (laughs) but i it sounds deep in my vagina (laughs) but I I have some concerns, and one of them is I couldn't find any studies on the efficacy of coconut oil being used to help treat or prevent yeast infections, something I never heard of working at the clinic. That's not to say those papers aren't out there, but I don't know. I'm suspicious. Even even if you're using it uh, on your sensitive areas and you're not getting clogged pores and irritated skin, which is really common with coconut oil, as Katie knows. The fact that you're having skin to skin contact with a sexual partner, I would imagine that maybe they might have some kind of sensitivity to coconut oil. So yeah. they might break out. The vagina is really, really complicated territory. It's an ecosystem where pH systems are trying to balance back and forth. It's 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 very, very delicate. There weren't any studies out there about the efficacy of coconut oil being used as a preventative or treatment for any kind of vaginal infection or bacterial problem, I'm going to do a hard pass because there's nothing that feels worse than a vagina that's irritated than in a, a vagina that's screaming in pain. <laughs> and if you're going to be using coconut oil potentially as lubricant, I don't know. I can't tell like with all of her cutesy little names that she has for body parts, who knows where we're putting these oils on her bodies, I could be just massaging this into her scalp. I have no idea. <laughs> but, like, coconut oil is an oil based lube. Using oil based lubes with condoms is not a good idea. So, and, and coconut, okay, and just for practical purposes, coconut oil is hell expensive and it's hella messy. It's like, you know, like you're yeah. just taking clumps of it out with a spoon. Do 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 you and your partner a favor. Go get some Astro Glide at Target for eleven bucks. It's fine. I promise you it's fine. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be a lot happier. Don't use coconut oil and spend all that money and you're just gonna smell like a uh, pina colada at the end of the night. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're aiming for. There were a few things I wanted to learn a little bit more about that I hadn't found anywhere else. 
So I went to Goodreads who reviewed her book. One of the things that Lucy Libido states is you can balance your hormones using essential oils. And the woman on Goodreads who's doing this review says, I had no idea this was even a thing. I'm annoyed. I'm just learning about this now, but better late than never. Oh, honey. <laughs> like... <laughs> So this hormone balancing, I was like, ah, funny she didn't mention it in the uh, in the podcast interview. So I went to Google. I found someone's online Young Living class where this rep used Lucy Libido's book as a teaching guide and Bible to get all of her information together. So this is Lucy Libido's philosophy right here. You need that seal, this seed to seal commitment. So that means only use Young Living oils. Using right. cheap, adulterated ones down there. No, just no. That's what it says verbatim. Using any oils, essential oils down there is a no. Yeah, don't do it, guys. Before trying an oil in a sensitive area, try it on your forearm first. You don't want to learn that your body doesn't like an oil in uncomfortable places. Well, just let me tell you, I would much rather get poison oak on my forearm than I would on my clitoris. So. <laughs> That's I true. Mean, I would much rather get sunburned on my forearm than on my clitoris. Oh, can you imagine? I don't want I to. I can't. I don't want, I don't want to. to. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Never use hot oils undiluted on sensitive membranes, which we talked about earlier being thieves, peppermint, and lemongrass. If a recipe calls for ingesting, please make sure you are using Young Living. Don't because that makes a difference. No, just don't ingest them. Why do people have to ingest essential oils? Why do you even need essential oils? You don't. There's so many other things you could use instead for all of all of the things that you use essential oils for. Especially cooking. Like butter. Like butter. Or actual seasonings. <laughs> butter and seasoning. That's like, my oil. Like, why use lemon essential oil when you could use actual lemon? Always try an oil topically before you try it internally to test for sensitivity. Now, that'd be like if I rubbed a some cyanide powder on my forearm <laughs> and maybe got a little bit of a reaction. I'm just saying. <laughs> so balancing hormones for men. There is this YL blend called Mr. that she refers to earlier. This blend was originally form formulated to balance male hormones and to help support healthy prostate function. Mr. contains yarrow, sage myrtle fennel lavender and peppermint and peppermint isn't that a hot oil we weren't supposed to use yeah just putting it out there yep if your husband's libido gas find uh, oh that must have been a typo on her part gas find that mister helps balance their hormones as well that doesn't even make sense and then the word gas is in there and i'm just thinking about <laughs> hank hill propane <laughs> <laughs> I sell propane and propane accessories. Sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, they also mentioned Blue Idaho Spruce, which we heard earlier. I abbreviated, curiously, as IBS in the class. And Greg and Craig said to me, it's really interesting that they that they chose something as more masculine, like a tree, than something dainty, like lilac. Even though lilac might could actually be better. And then also it's just abbreviated as, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. So that's all I'm, I'm saying. So apparently it helps with testosterone levels. Eight drops of Idaho blue spruce a day in a capsule can increase testosterone by 30% in two weeks. Well, I mean, they're already using essential oils. And if they had chosen a girly essential oil, it would have called into question their manliness. I'm just saying, if you're going to make a little blue pill that increases men's arousal and stamina, I'm going to pass on YL Capsule Idaho Blue Spruce until Bob Dole sponsors it like he did for Viagra in the 90s. Hard pass. 
They also suggest nutmeg and goldenrod are blood pumping oil for your mister. They stimulate energy and pop pump blood to every single part of the body. You hear that, guys? And they dilate his blood vessels. Can you put it all together? Energy. Extra blood. Dilated <laughs> blood vessels. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> and then goldenrod can be applied directly on the goldenrod. Oh, God. Why? Why? Okay. Yeah. And I like that it's called a goldenrod. That's cool. Now, now for, for for us ladies, what should we be taking? This is this is this is this is the final question. What should ladies be taking? Internalizing, rubbing on their bodies to help them feel better. Well, you've got YL Progressense Plus. Progressense Plus was developed by a doctor that specializes in women's hormones issues. He noticed that many women with a low sex drives had low progesterone or zero progesterone. Oh, shit. Zero progesterone. In addition to libido concerns, many of these women suffered from other physical issues such as forearms and or neck once daily. What? What? Did I, did I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I skipped a line. Suffered from <laughs> physical issues such as migraines, a difficult PMS, hot flashes, or night sweats. Progesinus Plus can help you balance you out. Apply two to four drops to the forearms and or neck once daily. This isn't like the Depo Shot or a Mirena or any of the other birth controls you can get from a clinic. So I don't know where the progesterone is. Yeah. It's supposed to, is it like a magnet that's going to like find the zero progesterone in my body and be like, it's just going to come out, it come out wherever you are. <laughs> just gather, just going to gather it and then multiply it. Mitosis. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be like maggots on a dead raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, we've got endoflex. Oh, hang on. I said nucleus. It's mitochondria. I'm tired. Okay. Yeah, I know. On. I'm tired too. <laughs> uh, endoflex supports the endocrine system. Your endocrine system is responsible for producing hormones, it regulates your metabolism your mood, and your sleep. Also, it can be helpful in supporting your pituitary, your thyroid, your adrenals, and for increased energy. When looking at getting in the mood, <laughs> it is important that you look at your hormones as your starting point. Well, no shit, I gotta look at my hormones. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you... Yeah, yeah, but I don't think... I don't think some oil that's going to burn off my love button is going to really help me. You have to stop saying love button. I can't deal with it. <laughs> oh, I'm all about it. I'm all about love button. Just, I just hate wait. it so much. Just wait till I change my name in the group chat. <laughs> oh, God. So that was uh, Lucy Libido's philosophy for how you should keep your marriage alive and how you should be having oily, oily, oily fun between the sheets that don't involve bacon grease rubbed on your nipples, because that's that's what I think oily fun is. <laughs> Just the leftover grease. Put them in a solo cup, let it uh, let it um, settle out, and then just rub it on my body, and we have a good time. I mean, that'll work, right? That'll, that'll uh, I definitely... Think it'll, I think it'll work better than Idaho Blue Spruce. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, sites, and we will be right back to wrap this all up, just like you wrap it up with a condom. <laughs> getting juicy all right dear listeners that about sums it up for this episode of sounds like mlm but okay the podcast with me sasha as your dominating host as co-hostess and with my girl 
Katie as my other co-host, and we are co-hosts that work well together. Katie, do you have any final thoughts for this very sensual episode? You know, I really don't. I feel like there's nothing more that I can say on this particular topic. Well, dear listeners, all I have to say is don't use those oils in the sheets unless it's bacon grease or guaranteed to attract maggots. You can find us anywhere on any of your favorite social media platforms. We are Sounds Like MLM But OK Podcast on Facebook, SLM, SLMLM But OK on Instagram. The same handle is on Twitter. And if you want to hear more of the sexy voice, dial 1-900-FUCK-MLM. And if you sign up three friends under you, it goes from $198 a month to just $150. And you don't have to call yourself a kitty napper. (laughs) So stay safe. Stay aroused. Keep your head upright. Keep the other head upright for your man. And on that note... Stay sexy and don't get scammed. Bye.